Hi everyone, today I'm going to tell you about the Hattori Hanzo um, Paradox. Now, uh, this video is in conjunction with Nick from the Shogunate and he should be uploading a video on Hattori Hanzo today, uh, written by myself and him. And uh, I will be linking that in the description below when it becomes live. Okie dokie, right guys. Hattori Hanzo, we're talking about the 1500s, that's the 16th century general war master, if you like, Devil Hanzo, who supported Tokugawa Ieyasu. But there is a scroll out there, a ninja scroll, called... The Shinobi Hiden, sometimes it's known as Ninpiden, and it's allegedly, allegedly, I'm going to deal with that in a minute, uh, written by Hattori Hanzo. And you can get a copy of it in this, is The Secret Traditions of the Shinobi, Hattori Hanzo's Shinobi Hiden and Other Ninja Scrolls. So it's all in there, the full translation. So we're going to talk today. Right, now uh, I do advise you watch Nick's video as well, because it'll have loads of information. Uh, about the history, the date, everything about that text. But here I'm going to talk about a little bit of a paradox that uh, that we don't seem to get round. So the Hattori Hanzo's Shinobi Hiden is called the Shinobi Hiden, uh, basically ninja traditions, secret ninja traditions, and it is signed off. It's five volumes and it's signed off on four volumes by Hattori Hanzo, just says Hattori Hanzo, with other people after it. And actually the, the first volume out of the five is written by someone else. Now he is um, writing in the 1600s. So there is a debate out there whether this was actually written by Hattori Hanzo or not. The famous Hattori Hanzo wrote a shinobi scroll and the date of 1560 is in there. Oh my God, this is, it's too good to be true. 1560 is a really early date for the shinobi hidden, uh, for the, uh, for a ninja scroll and written by Hattori Hanzo in his youth and he's like when he's 18. Wow. Oh my God. That's amazing. Well, um, so, so a lot of people have said, oh, I don't think it's real. It's possibly not real. And in Japan, you say, uh, you hear people say maybe it's not written by him, it's attributed to him, etc, etc. So let's break that down here, okay? Now the first point I need to put across is there is zero, that's a zero proof at the moment that it was not written by him. It says him, it's got the date there, it's a compiled section of chapters, if you like, volumes. The first volume is clearly written in 1655 by another member of the Hattori family, a Hattori Saburo, and it talk, it's got an introduction and everything, then it's clearly obvious that two, three, four and five are put together. So, well, you know, are the original ones there. Now, it has been said in Japan that possibly this isn't the real date. Um, now, the evidence for that, as I said, is zero. Uh, it's only an assumption. They think, oh, maybe it's Hattori Hanzo's too famous. So maybe it's not by him. But there is no proof, no evidence, no anything to say it's not. And at the worst, what they're saying is it was written in 1655 um, by Hattori Saburo, who was then using the name Hattori Hanzo to sort of attach importance to it. That's the paradox. That's what I'm going to go through now. So to start with, let's get rid of the misconceptions about Hattori Hanzo. Now, Hattori Hanzo is famous now because of films. He's in Kill Bill. He's, uh, he's in old Japanese movies. He's in old Japanese TV shows where he's like Hattori Hanzo ninja. And you've got all oh, Hattori Hanzo. This, and everybody's got this concept of Hattori Hanzo. You need to scrub all of that. Scrub the 20th century and be like, no, nope, let's get rid of all the 20th century and the 19th century and the 18th century and all that. And just actually look at what he did. He was a commander on 8,000 Koku uh, under Tokugawa Ieyasu or Matsudaira back then uh, at the original time. And then and his father worked for the Matsudaira clan in Mikawa. OK, so and he becomes known as Devil Hanzo. And he's like because he is demonic in his tactics, if you like, he's dangerous in his tactics. He's that good. So that's what he's famous for in that time, allegedly. OK, so get rid of all the movies and TV and go only what is Hattori Hanzo famous for? If I was Hattori Saburo writing in 1655, what is Hattori Hanzo famous for? Less than 40 years before me, 50 years before me. So this is the paradox. If people say Hattori Hanzo didn't write it, it's too high level for a shinobi. Igamono. So they've got this thing in Japan where they're like, Igamono are low level people. This is because they are listening to the late 1800s, 1900s um, documents and things like that. 
actually shinobi as we've established is a bushy tradition it is absolutely samurai tradition it goes across all the boundaries but there's no reason samurai are not doing it so the idea of hattori hanzo at 8000 koku which is massively high being an igamono as shinobi is a bit weird and it is a bit weird but that's it's not it's not the fact that he couldn't have started as an igamono and risen through the ranks so let's have a look at what we actually don't know about hattori hanzo now, what we know about Hattori Hanzo is actually not as much as you think. It's not that much. We know uh, his status. We know sort of turns up at this battle and we know he's on 8000 Koku. But what we don't know is what his father was doing. So his father is from Iga. There's no doubt that the Hattori family are from Iga. OK, and he is an, a person of Iga. I'm not going to say Igamono. He's a person of Iga who's working in Mikawa. Mikawa. Why is a person in Iga working in Mikawa? That's what we have to do. Usually, you would just jump to Igamono Shinobi. That's what it is. But maybe not. We don't know. But what we need to find, and I've tried to find these. We've had uh, Yoshie searching the internet and everything to try and find um, what he was actually doing. And it's very difficult to find out what any reasonable documents on what his koku, his status is, and what he's actually doing. So is he an Igamono? Is he a retainer for a different level? So we've got two situations here. Either... Hattori Hanzo the first, his father, comes across and he's high ranking and he's with uh, Tokugawa Iyasu and they're high ranking and his son is also high ranking, uh, version one. Or version two, his father comes across as a normal Igamono, um, a samurai of Iga on, I don't know, say 50, 100 Koku, nobody knows. And he has a son, but his son's a bit of a strategist, a bit of a genius, and he goes right up the, uh, the escalating ladder and becomes uh, almost ha um, a daimyo with 8,000 koku. He needs 2,000 koku more. But uh, Hattori, uh, but Tokugawa Yasu keeps him as a close general, Hatamoto, if you like, and he's there on 8,000 koku. That's situation number two. So here's the issue. If the um, Shinobi Hiden is attributed to him 50 years later, then surely he's famous as a shinobi, which means he could have easily written the manual because the someone in the Hattori family is putting together all of the ninja information, okay? Um, now, if it is written by him, then he must have been a shinobi or brought up in a shinobi family. So do you see the paradox? They're saying, so the Japanese have been saying that Hattori Hanzo is too famous for this. He's, he's too famous to be a shinobi, too high level. But if somebody in 1655 is attributing this document to him, it means he was famous in his own time for being a shinobi. And if he did write it, he's a shinobi. So either way, no matter what you say, Hattori Hanzo is a shinobi. You don't write something, attribute it to someone because they're no good at that thing. Imagine if I wrote something like, uh, let's just say a flower arranging document. I wrote the most impressive flower arranging document in the world. And I said it wasn't written by me. It was written by Albert Einstein. And as far as I'm aware, Albert Einstein is not famous for flower arranging. So it's like, huh? why would Albert Einstein? You know, if I'm like, here's my document. Why is Albert Einstein here? But if I wrote a book on physics and wrote Albert Einstein... This is the same problem. You can say it's attributed to Albert Einstein. So what does that tell us about Albert Einstein? It says he was pretty good at physics. But if it is written by Albert Einstein, he's pretty good at physics. So you see what I mean? There's no way out of the fact that if this is about the devil Hattori Hanzo, it is absolutely making him a shinobi, no matter if it's written by him or not by him. That's the issue. But it's not the end of the story. So here's where more problems come in. It doesn't mention Tokugawa or Matsudaira anyway. If you don't know who Matsudaira is, basically it's the family before Tokugawa Yasu. It's his original name. It's what the clan he comes from. He takes the Tokugawa name. So it doesn't mention him. So hold on a minute. If it's written in 1560, it wouldn't mention him. Tokugawa Yasu has yet to take control of the country in 1600. So if it is written in 1560, there's absolutely no mention of his time as Devil Hanzo. That's because it's before the date he becomes Devil Hanzo. But this is any there's more. Basically, we all everyone agrees that it the first volume is written in 1655. So if it's written in 1655, why does it not mention Devil Hanzo? Why does it not mention Tokugawa Iyasu? 
any of the history of the Sengoku period of the Sekigahara campaign or any of that, nothing that Hattori Hanzo is famous for is mentioned in the 1655 introduction to the 1560 text. OK, so this is where it gets a bit like cuckoo. So even if the, the 1560s documents, volume two, three, four and five, uh, two, three, four and five are actually written by Hattori Hanzo, the great Hattori Hanzo or his father, which it could have been written by his father because the dates are absolutely there then none of that is mentioned in the introduction, which was written way after them. So you're like, ah, why? That's a really horrible point. So actually, that leads us to the possibility that it might have been written by another Hattori Hanzo. So what do we mean by another Hattori Hanzo? First of all, you should understand there is not one Hattori Hanzo. Hattori is the family name. So the name, my name's Cummins and Anthony is my first name. So imagine now if I pass on my family name, Anthony, as as the leader of the family. So I have the eldest son and we call him Anthony Cummings and his son, he calls Anthony Cummings and his son calls Anthony Cummings. But actually in Japan, you can change your name halfway through your life. So imagine if the I have a son and he's called Gerald Cummings, but then when I die, he adopts the name Anthony. And then when he has a son, he calls him um, Lawrence. And, he, and when my son dies, my grandson changes his name to Anthony. So the point is, is you get Hattori Hanzo all the way down. So that's one line. But we've, as we've established in this video, why does it not mention their connection to the Tokugawa, the Matsudaira? So what we know in Japanese families, there are many branches that go off and they start what's called a cadet branch. So if you get the main branch, Hattori Hanzo here, then you get a cadet branch and they set a cadet and there's all different branches of the Hanzo family, the, sorry, the Hattori family, then it's possible that each one of the heads is calling themselves Hattori Hanzo. So you could have Hattori Hanzo of this district, Hattori Hanzo of this district, Hattori Hanzo. That's not so unthinkable because you might only have like three or four Hattori Hanzos in existence at a time who have valleys away from each other, literally like one's in Mikawa, one might be in Odawara, they've gone around Japan. So the Hattori family, as we know, in the 1500s, the Igamono break away, go all over Japan and are hired everywhere. So what if the, the cousins of the Hattori family said, well, I'll start my cadet branch there and I'll start my branch there. So we actually have a new branch, Hattori Hanzo, Hattori Hanzo, Hattori Hanzo, Hattori Hanzo. But of course, they just, there's no records from the 1500s. So they've just gone in, they've disappeared into the echo of like non-history, if you like, or a history that's not been recorded. So it might be the fact that this document is either written by Hattori Hanzo before he becomes a famous general. But that leaves us with the problem that why is it not mentioned in 1655 that it's the line of that you totally would. If you're writing your family tradition, you'd be like, this is from Devil Hanzo. This is from Hattori Hanzo, who served Tokugawa Ieyasu. The battle of this and the battle of that. You'd be totally get all that. Or it was made up in 1655 by one guy who attributes it to a guy in his family who therefore by paradox should be a shinobi so it makes no sense whatsoever to me and then the, the other one is that there's a different branch a cadet branch of the Hanzo line of the Hattori line which this is written in and it's later we just misunderstand it as Tokugawa Iyasu's devil Hanzo who knows it's a puzzle I hope you enjoyed that guys no oh by the way the last thing to say is that we when you talk to anyone in Japan, realistically talk to them, especially Yoshie Minami, my, my good friend Yoshie. The Shinobi Hiden is not as exciting as you would expect it to be if somebody made it up. OK, I'm not saying it's a boring text. It's actually vastly interesting but it's not exciting. So exciting would be on oh, this battle. We did this and he creeped in and it was murder. You know, you would totally go with it if you were making up. But actually, it's like when you need to cross through country, dress yourself as a scarecrow or when you need to do this, adopt this hairstyle. So from us, from a ninja point of view, it's one of the most interesting scrolls you can get because it's got lots of avenues to go into. But from a sort of it was made up later to to ride on the Sengoku period greatness of a family that was massive. It doesn't say anything about them and it's not quite as you would imagine. So to me, it's either Hattori Hanzo's father 
Hattori Hanzo himself, or an unknown branch of the Hattori family who also call themselves Hanzo at the top of everybody. There we go. So what do you think, guys? That's the paradox. Let me know what you think. <laughs>